Okay, so the functions. So if I quickly take this off, so let's see what is the structure of the of the basophil and the mast cell. So what they have is the cell has is granules in them. These granules contain very dangerous substances which are sitting in there, they are preformed, they are packaged and they are the ones which cause allergic reactions. Note this, it, this does not mean, my statement does not mean that these cells are made for allergic reactions. Allergic reaction is not a physiological function, it is a pathological function. The cells are really made to combat the helminths in our body. So these cells have a particular function to do. They do, nowadays the research is saying that they are also helping us for bacterial infection and you would also be um, uh, happy to understand that the snake venom is also neutralized by these cells mediators or the chemical substances present in these. So really these cells did not come into being to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to be generated in a body, in a human or in an, in an animal and then go and have allergic reactions in that person. That is not the primary function of these cells. The primary function of these cell is to actually protect us from helminths, from bacterial infections, very minor function. So I would not really stress on this one. So this is, this is the primary function. And then some importance in case of snake venom as well. And this is true for basophils and eosinophil both. This extra pathological function of allergic reaction has become dominant because very fewer times we are looking towards these cells to help us here and more times they are actually disturbing us and annoying us by, by creating those allergic problems. So without any further delays, let's see what's in there. So the basophil or the mast cells, inside their granules, they have gotten histamine and histamine, you know, is a very strong vasoactive amine plus a smooth muscle contractor. You would see that for these cells, for, for eosinophils, for mast cells, for basophils, you would see this general theme. What would that theme be? Vasodilatation, vasodilatation and smooth muscle contraction. This is the general theme. Most of the chemical substances, most of the mediators which these guys are going to be releasing, you would see those mediators to be doing these two primary functions, which are vasodilatation and smooth muscle constriction. Why, why are these important and what, do, what, does, what happens when that happens? So vasodilatation would mean what? We would develop edema. The blood, when the vessel is dilated, dilated and the permeability is increased, permeability, so increased permeability of a vessel plus dilatation, what that would mean is that the fluids would shift from the vascular compartment into the tissue compartment, extracellular fluid compartments. That can be dangerous because the number one, there would be edema in different areas and edema of larynx can really become dangerous. Number two, hypertension can occur and that hypertension can become part of anaphylaxis and cause a patient's, um, it can be fatal for a patient. Similarly, smooth muscle contraction. So the important part in the smooth muscle contraction is the contraction of the bronchial smooth muscles and that would cause a choking effect and we will not be able to breathe properly. And so respiratory distress can occur in anaphylaxis when these cells are active. So both of these functions are actually going to cause anaphylaxis and these can be fatal. Many people actually if not provided support while the anaphylaxis is occurring or the type 1 allergic reaction is occurring, many people die because of these issues. So you have to understand why this happens. So once again, 
histamine is there we will talk about this at how and why this happens histamine is a very potent uh, vasodilator and smooth muscle uh, contractor then we have heparin heparin also has a similar effect on the system then we have tryptases tryptases would actually go and cause a tissue breakdown and this tissue breakdown is then breakdown is then accompanied by arachidonic acid pathways and further tissue breakdown products or lipid mediators lipid mediators which then have their own action then we have uh, peroxidases remember myeloperoxidase in the in the neutrophil so peroxidases are very important uh, enzymes which take part in creating the reactive oxygen species so peroxidases are present in these cells as well then of course we have some hydrolases hydrolases and so on some other digestive enzymes so in these guys in these cells the basophils and the mast cells the importance of the digestive enzymes is that not that that big the importance of the histamine heparin serotonin like substances which would cause vaso activity and smooth muscle contraction is more because at the end of the day these are the life threatening components of these so now let's see how does this whole thing work so first of all this is not a lecture in which we would talk about the allergic reactions but for, to to be able to understand the basophil and mast cells we have to understand how the type 1 allergic reaction occurs to briefly and then we'll be able to understand how these cells play a major role in there so let's see first of all the concept of allergen the concept of allergen as compared to antigen is this antigen normally is a damaging factor for all of us so i'm i'm talking about humans um maybe i'm excluded but anyways i'm talking about humans so antigen is a pathogen which is going to be having its effect on all of us uniformly um, damaging allergen on the contrary does not have the same effect on all of us allergen could have about 20% of the population could react to this thing whatever this substance is normally pollen dander dust mites and so on so could be anything but allergen is a substance which is external can come into our bodies and normally people do not react to it so about 80% of the population does not react to it and 20% of the population feels hypersensitive about them they react to them they are sensitive to it that is why these are called hypersensitivity reactions and we have an idea of why these 20% do it so frankly allergen is not an antigen because it doesn't have a uniform damaging effect on all the species it only has allergen only has that effect on 20% people now why is that this is because of a genetic disposition so do not forget this do not forget this concept this genetic disposition because of hla genes we'll talk about them a little bit later in our next lecture the important thing is this that in these people who have more allergic reactions in this is an unfortunate situation but in my my both sons have allergic reactions my wife has allergic allergic reactions so all three of them are so at least in my home it is 75% but anyways the genetic disposition for these individuals is it, is, it would result into making more t helper 2 cells that is a primary problem so again i'm not doing type 1 hypersensitivity thoroughly i'm just gleaning over that so that we can understand the effect of mast cells so the genetic predisposition is that the people who make more type 2 helper t cells which are part of the acquired immunity and we have not yet talked about them so i'm not expecting you to be able to recall something about these just at this moment just know this 
the very first lecture where we gave the bigger picture, we talked about it that the type 2 helper T cells, which are produced in the type 0, remember, they would create, they would produce interleukin 4, interleukin 5, right, which act on the B cells for making the antibodies. So, if you have not, not seen those lectures, go back to the very first lectures with immunology, where the bigger picture was present. So, when these cells, Th2 cells are more, then of course, IL4 and IL5 are more. What does that mean? That means that the T helper cells in here, the T helper cell would act more on the B cells. So, these IL4 and 5s act on the B cells. In this, here is the important thing, do not forget this. The IL4 is used to do class switching of immunoglobulin from M, G, whatever to E. So, IL4 is used to class switch from IgM to whatever other classes come in the way to IgE. This is what is important, very important. IL5 causes the class switching to A. IL4 causes the class switching to E. So, again we have not talked about class switching, we have not talked about B cells. So, I am not expecting you to know this, but in our, in our bigger picture lecture, we did talk about it briefly to create a bigger context before we talked about this all. So, remember this that the T cell which are more, which are producing IL4, that extra IL4 is going to go and poke the B cells to produce more IgE. This IgE has something to do with the mast cells. Why? Because mast cells, mast cells on their surface present receptors where IgE, FC portion of IgE can come and attach, FC portion. So, it is like a horse, the mast cell is like a horse and IgE is sitting on it and this receptor is the saddle. So, you got a horse, on that there is a saddle, that is a receptor and on that saddle is sitting the IgE. And whenever IgE would send a signal to the horse, the horse will do its function, right. So, remember this, if there are more IgEs, so let us say I am allergic as compared to you, you are not allergic to things and I am allergic to them. That means, there are more IgEs produced in my body. Why? Because there are more T helper 2 cells in my body. Why? Because that is a genetic disposition. Why did that happen? The 20 percent of the people are having such genes, they are inheriting them. This is a familial problem. So, at the end of the day, they have more IgE. Okay, so, what? They have more IgE. Here is what. When there is more IgE, the mast cells and the basophils have gotten a greater number of IgE receptors occupied by IgE. So, this is the FC epsilon receptor. This is FC epsilon, epsilon for E receptor, right. So, can I say if I make two mast cells, mast cell in a person who is less allergic to things and mast cell in a person who is more allergic to things. This guy might have 1, 2, 3 receptors. And this guy on the other hand will be filled with the receptors and IgE is sitting in them. Why IgE is sitting in them? Actually, I should have said it this way, both of them have a greater number of receptors, a normal number of receptors. So, receptor is not the problem, sorry my diagrams made it look like if receptor was the problem. Receptor is not the problem. In a normal or less allergic or less prone to allergies person, there are less IgEs present on the mast cells. But on a person who is allergic, he or who has that genetic disposition, he has a lot of IgEs which have already occupied the receptors. That is the problem. As soon as these IgEs will become triggered and do the function, this mast cell is going to do its action. So, uh, let us 
continue discussing that how that action happened. We're going to go inside the cell and talk about it.